Welcome everyone for another Kingdom Transformation broadcast. My name is Mark Levesque. I'm with Forest Glory Ministries and I have the founder and president of Forest Glory Ministries here with us, my good friend Rob Welch. Welcome Rob. Why don't you say hi to the folks. We're going to be talking about your favorite person today. Jesus. Jesus. We're okay, gonna... well good. <laughs> good. Uh, glad we get to spend time with you today. And I certainly hope the Lord speaks to your heart today. You know, we need that day by day, moment by moment. We really need to hear from God. So we want kingdom transformation to speak to you. And and the truths that you hear on this program, our desire is that they, they change your lives. Absolutely. You know, the gospel needs to transform our hearts and renew our minds. And that's what we're about. And that's what kingdom transformation is about. So if you're listening on podcast or watching us on Facebook or YouTube. Welcome. We're glad you're here. We are. And, uh, you know, we're in a series. The series is titled, What Do I Need to Know? What do I most need to know? And really, <laughs> it's Jesus. Um, you know, there's a, a scripture that talks about what eternal life is. And that scripture is in John chapter 17, verse 3. I thought we'd just jump, jump right into that service because it's foundational for our conversation. Mm -hmm. And so uh, basically it says, Now this is, this is eternal life, that, that they might know you, the only true God, talking about God the Father and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, God the mm -hmm. Son. And so that's eternal life. We, it's, God, it's in God and it's in his Son, Jesus Christ. And so eternal life, uh, just to define what that means... It doesn't mean an endless extension of days. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean because people who are uh, enemies of God are, are living eternally somewhere. Mm -hmm. it, 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 means, it doesn't mean that you're going to live forever because if you accept Jesus and receive his life. It means that you receive a quality of life. And so eternal life is not an endless extension of days. That's every, every being lives eternally. Every spiritual being, every human being will live forever. It just depends on what kind of life we have, where we are, and where we're living. So eternal life is a quality of life. It's actually God's life, and we need God's life. When Adam and Eve fell, they separated from God's life, and death entered, and sickness, disease, and all the mess of the human race entered in when they separated from God's life. Jesus Christ came to reestablish that connection for life. And so he brought eternal life, and that life is found in God the Father, the only true God, and in Jesus Christ, whom he sent. And so what we need to know Jesus, mm -hmm. and that's the key. You, eternal life comes from the knowledge, the relationship with Jesus. It does. And it's interesting, the, the scripture that Mark just read for us, this is uh, what's referred to in, in John 17 as the high priestly prayer. Jesus is praying right before he's arrested. Uh, Judas has left. Uh, so this is the night that he was betrayed, uh, which we, we hear in some church services. You're in the night that he was betrayed, and it's referring to the Lord's Supper. So Jesus had just instituted the Lord's Supper, the, the new covenant uh, that he uh, established uh, and establishes with us. Uh, and he now is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, he's praying with his father. And, and uh, it, we're brought in, you know, through the scripture to what Jesus is saying to his father. And, and he's saying the hour has come, father, the hour has come, glorify your son that the son may glorify you since you've given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And then he continues, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. So Jesus is talking about fulfilling his mission here. And he's talking about giving life eternal and what life eternal is. And, you know, there's nothing more important for us to understand because if we don't understand this, we're chasing the wrong things. We're pursuing the wrong things, no matter how successful you might be in your life. If you don't have eternal life with God and have that relationship, it's empty and it's temporary. 
And so whatever blessing you have is a temporary experience. It's not a forever reality. And that's something that God wants for each of us. And it's so interesting that Jesus, as he's praying to his father, right before he goes to the cross, he's talking about eternal life. He's talking about what it is. And I'm glad that we get to talk about that today because everybody needs to understand that. And they need to understand it deeply, not just okay, I'm saved, I have eternal life, I'm going to be with God when I die. But you need to understand that reality for your life day by day, moment by moment. And when you're sharing with others, talking with others, living before others, so that they might see the hope that you have in Christ and that God might use you to bring others into his family. Right, there's a verse in the Bible that says, we are reconciled to God by the death of his son. Yes. Much more being reconciled, we are saved by his life. Yes. And so it's life that actually saves us. And so mm -hmm. the cross took care of our sin. In fact, the took cross the judgment. took the judgment of God. Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus was like a lightning rod and all the judgment of God from all eternity came upon Jesus. Yes, Jesus it bore it all. He bore all our sin, he mm -hmm. bore all our judgment. But we're, and that is for everyone. That is available to everyone. You know, it's, it's kind of like if, you, if you're given a gift and you, you put the gift on the table and you never open it, the, the gift, even though the gift is yours, it doesn't do you any, any value. Mm -hmm. You have to open it. And That's so truth. God has provided forgiveness from sin for every human being on earth. But not everyone knows enough that it's been given to them or to open it. And so it's opening the gift that's the key. Mm. But it's because it's the not only is it the forgiveness from sins, but, but it's the life of God that saves us. And so we're saved eternally because when you receive God's life, we get a new spirit, right, Rob? We get a we get we get the spirit of God mm -hmm. recreating our our spirit. We become mm -hmm. a new creature. Yeah, and we're seated with Christ spiritually in heavenly places. So uh, it, it's complicated, I think, for people to understand. You talk about it all the time, Mark, uh, but I I think few people understand just kind of the distinctions uh, of who you are. You know what we're made of. It, you know we're spirit. We have a soul. We're eternal beings and we live in a body. You, know, right. you, you say this, I've heard you say it many times. You are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. I, I think few people really spend any time at all considering that or unpacking that. So when, when you're born again, you are born into God's family. So before God, you are seen as perfect because you're clothed with the righteousness of Christ. So God sees you as if you've never sinned. That's why those who trust in Christ have eternal life. It's not that they never sinned, but before God, all that sin was dealt with by Jesus on the cross. So it's, it's separated from you. As the Bible says, as far as the East is from the West, he separated you from your sin. That's you. That's your spirit, your soul. Okay. You're, you're eternal, uh, here. You know, that, that's in the process of being conformed to the image of Christ. Right. There's, there's that sanctification process. You're hurting, you're wounded, you have, you have issues that you still deal with. Uh, that's going to continue in this life as long as you're here on earth. You're, you're being conformed to the image of Christ. The Bible talks about that. We're being sanctified is another word that sometimes used, or purified, but we're, we're more and more to reflect who Christ is to the world. So that, and then you have your body, which is your physical dwelling that your soul lives in. And, and so that th you live in, but that's your tent and that's temporary until the resurrection where you have your glorified body, you know? And right. so, so we're complicated and that we're not, um, we're not one thing. We're not one. We're Most, one, but we have different. Yeah. We have different uh, parts of our being. We're made in God's image and likeness, which means that God is three persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But one God. But one God. And we are one person, but we have three parts, spirit, soul, and body. And our body is what most people identify with. Mm -hmm. Most people, all they know is their body. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that happens when we come to know Christ there starts to become a dawning on us that we're more than just flesh. Mm, we're yes. more than just physical. There's a, there's a spiritual side of us that we can tap into. And that is powerful. You know, a lot of times when I'm talking to people about Christ, they've come to me because they have a problem quite often. And we'll talk about their problem, their issue. And I, I said, well, there's help of outside of this world you can tap into. You've been ruling your own life. You've been mm -hmm. king of your life. 
how's it going for you? Well, you just told yeah. me it wasn't going very well. And so they'll say, well, it's not going well. Well, why don't we give it all over to Jesus? Let him become the king of your life and let him add his wisdom to yours, mm -hmm. maybe to go better for you. <laughs> not to mention having his life, his strength, his joy, his peace. <laughs> I mean, why anyone would live this life without Christ, it surprises me. But why is it so hard for people to let go? I mean, that being said, because we're selfish. <laughs> you would think every person, if you look at this reasonably, and this isn't just reason here, but if you look at it reasonably, you think, boy, everyone would come. Why would you try to run your own life? And yet so many people are unwilling to let go. And, and, and the thing is, you're going to have to let go anyway. Because when you die, there's going to be a letting go. You can't hold on to this life right. forever. In the body, right. I'm talking. Absolutely. Unless Jesus comes back while we're still here, which he will at some point. So if we're still here, then we'll meet the Lord. We'll be forever with the Lord. It talks about that in Thessalonians. It talks about that a lot. You know, the second coming. And we're forever going to be with him. But if you die physically before Jesus comes back, your body's going in the ground. And, and you're either going to be with the Lord or separated from him. And yet uh, people live as if they can hold on to this life forever and they can hold control of their life forever. And that's an illusion. Well, it really is. And, and we, we don't realize um, until we've come to Christ that th this relationship with God is what, is what gives life meaning and purpose. Yeah, it does. You know? Not, not only is it what I get from him, because he's got way more resources than, I, than any of us have, we, uh, we actually get a relationship with someone who loves us unconditionally, he loves us dearly. And so we start to experience a love that, that we just, we just can't, um, we can't fathom apart from God. Yeah, I was talking to a friend about that this morning. We had a great conversation, and, and, and it's so true. Um, we have that in Christ. And and how do you function without him? Certainly not well. And, and you can't long term. It won't work when you die. Then it's too late. Um, but why, why would you want to try, you know, to, to live without him? It, it's so empty. And, and, and I think we should probably address a couple of reasons why people don't come to Christ. I mean, one, I, one, one I, of them, I think, is that people don't feel worthy. You know? Well, why why is that, Mark? Why why does somebody? I, I hear that too, but but why do you think people don't feel worthy? I, I think they think their their sin is unforgivable. That why why would God forgive me? And they've been they've been given a religious mindset. I'm mm -hmm. even people that have never darkened the doorway of a church have picked up religion from our culture and our society, mm -hmm. and so we live within the shadow of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because we feel like I, I need to do more good and less evil, and I've, ha I've, I've, I haven't done enough good to offset the evil in my life, and that is religion, and that is actually not God's system. That's the mm -hmm. opposite of God's system. Actually, the only thing that qualifies a person for Jesus Christ is the fact that we're a sinner. Mm -hmm. It's the sinners that come to you know. Jesus said that those that think they're whole won't come to the physician. It's those that know they're sick that come, mm -hmm. and so it's those of us that know that we we need forgiveness that will. So. Really, we, let's just put to bed right now that no one is worthy of God in their own goodness. Yeah, because I have I I remember wrestling with that and feeling that I should get what I deserve and a great sense of guilt going with that as well because I knew I deserved death. I didn't want it and don't want it, but... but I, if I really get what I deserve, it's death. I remember when I, I talked with my youngest son, actually when he, right before he came to faith, he, uh, we had what this. What does it mean to come to faith? What, what is it? Uh, when he realized Jesus was his savior awesome. in a very profound and personal way, um, he was complaining, he was four, so he's young. And we're driving in the car and he and he's railing about something not being fair and 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 my youngest child has this deep sense of fairness and justice in his mind he's very strong david's very strong on that 
and, and I just started saying, son, I don't want fair. It's not fair that Jesus went to the cross. It isn't. You want to no. look at the most unfair event in all of history, the son of God taking all of our sin and all of God's wrath in his body, all the judgment in himself when he did nothing wrong. That's the most unfair thing that's ever, ever happened, ever will happen. And it's brought us salvation. Uh, but, but if you want fair, that is the opposite. Couldn't have been more unfair. It's completely unfair that Jesus did all that when he never did anything wrong. Fair is getting what we deserve. That is fair. The problem with fair is we all deserve hell. We all deserve it. I do, you do, every person that's ever lived except Jesus deserves God's wrath. So we've got to get beyond wanting what's fair or wanting what's right. I know sometimes we want what's right. That's another thing related to fair. Uh, I need grace. I need pardon. And, and, and when I was sharing that with David, my youngest son, he got it. He got it when, when he realized, okay, I am in trouble. I didn't say that to him, but as I'm preaching unintentionally, as I'm driving the car, he says, what do I do? Mm, that's good. And I said, cry out to Jesus and he'll save you. Because he recognized Oh no, I'm in trouble because I really, if I get fair, I'm judged. I don't want to be judged. I need forgiveness. What do I do? And then he responded to me saying, cry out to Jesus and he'll save you by crying out to the Lord in his heart, realizing he needed a savior and we all need a savior. We've got to get to that point. But if we're just going with religion, we never get there because we, we want to be our own savior. In our pride, I want to be my own savior. You want to be your own savior. That won't work for us, but that's our natural state. That's right. And and that's that's the religion that we talk about. And really, the opposite of religion is a relationship with Jesus because it's it's about the relationship and it's it's freely given to us. Forgiveness has been paid for by Jesus. It's yeah. freely given to us. So we're forgiven so we can come to Christ without feeling ashamed that we can't. And then we come to him for life. And when we know him, we receive his life. Yeah. And that word know is, a, is an intimate word. It, it means it's the same word that, uh, that Joseph did not know Mary, like have relations with Mary until after Jesus was born. And then Jesus ended up having multiple brothers and sisters after that. Jesus is Joseph's Joseph, the husband of Mary's stepson, uh, or Joseph, his stepfather. And so Mary was his, his biological mother, but God the Father was Jesus, his father, because he brought life from heaven. Mm -hmm. And so through coming the Holy to, Spirit. through the Holy Spirit, he was conceived by the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. And so one of the things that we do is we go to places that are very open and hungry to hear this message that they want to know Jesus Christ, they want to know eternal life. They've been sold a, a counterfeit. Many of them go to witch doctors, they go to, they go to necromancers, they go to people that, uh, that are, are false uh, spiritual guides. And so there's a lot of that that, that we weed through when we, uh, we go to Africa. But the, we have a picture of a festival that where we were just there uh, earlier in the year, and uh, it's uh, in Sumbawanga, Tanzania. And uh, Rob is there preaching through interpreter, and uh, and he's sharing Christ. And over five days, over fifty six thousand decision cards came. Fifty six thousand one hundred twenty five, I think the number was, came. And so Christ, uh, the, Christ came alive. These people con mm -hmm. confessed and then wrote down their information that they had confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, and that they had come to know Him. And so here's 56,000 people that didn't know Jesus Christ that have confessed that they do know him. And then what we do is we get these people into small groups and we and into churches, and then we, we train them to become disciple makers and sh those that share Jesus with others as well. But uh, it's profound to see so many people come to Christ. Mm -hmm. And, um, and what, what a wonderful opportunity uh, we had there to, to, uh, to share Christ. 
And, uh, you know, it, it's wonderful, and I'm very grateful to our partners, the partners of Forest Glory Ministries that actually sent us there. I mean, we, the people that send us, in a sense, they're going there through us, which is a beautiful thing. And so I'm so grateful to our partners for making that possible, for making this broadcast and our podcast possible. And, uh, you know, you too can be a partner. You can have part of this. You can, this ministry can be partly yours. Um, and so you can go to our website and become a partner. Uh, our monthly partners are very helpful. You could be, a, you could start as a monthly partner. Um, it would be a, a, a great investment in God's kingdom. And our way, our website is forhisglorymin.org. And so in, invest in others' futures that comes back is a blessing to us. And so it's an awesome thing. And we're planning to go to a place called Lumbombashi, Congo, uh, in October of, uh, 2021. And so you can help with that as well. Um, you know, this is a wonderful opportunity uh, through this broadcast to share some of the truths that we don't get to hear very often. Um, and so it's just nice to, it's nice to have this broadcast available for people. And, uh, and so, you know, one of, the th one of the things that we always want to talk about is what does it mean to, to actually know Jesus? How do I come into that relationship, that knowledge of Jesus? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not about religion. It's about starting a conversation. And you start a conversation with approaching him and, uh, and talking to him, asking him to, uh, to be your Lord and surrender your life. And so, Rob, would you like to just share um, your perspective on that? Well, as I was uh, saying earlier about my son, David, and when he came to believe for himself in Jesus as his Savior, uh, there has to be an understanding that we can't rescue ourselves. Uh, and it's, it's our natural desires we were talking about to want to earn, earn our salvation. And, and that is a lie from the devil because we can't earn God's grace. Uh, Jesus came because there was absolutely nothing we could do to restore ourselves to God. We underestimate how broken we are, how sinful we are. And, and really sin is a self focus. So if you don't understand what the word sin means, think of self or selfish. It's when we focus on ourself instead of God and others. And we all do it. We're all guilty. The Bible says none of us are righteous, not even one. So it's foolish to argue and say, well, you're more sinful than I am, or I'm more sinful. That's not a helpful argument. We've all sinned. The Bible's clear. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And to be in God's presence, we have to be without sin. But that's a problem because we've all sinned. And so God, in his love, in his mercy sent one who never sinned, his own son. Jesus lived the perfect life. He perfectly did the will of God. He perfectly loved and loves God. He perfectly loved and loves people. He perfectly gave himself up as an offering and a sacrifice for our sins. And he took God's judgment for our wickedness. That's what Jesus did when he went to the cross. He never sinned. He didn't deserve that. We did. I do. I deserve to be crucified. So do you. It's horrible to think. But Jesus was. And he was crucified because he loves me. And he loves you. And he loves his father. And God the Father wasn't willing for you to perish. And he paid for your life with the life of his son. Now, that's a very profound truth. Those of us that are parents, think about that. I have three children. I would die for any of them. But God had his son die for me. And he died for you. Because there was nothing we could do to save ourselves. So you got to realize that. You got to realize Jesus did what you can't do for yourself. And he took a judgment that you couldn't pay. He took hell 
so you don't have to. You don't have to be afraid anymore. If you trust in Jesus today, if you trust in him now, you don't have to fear the judgment because it was already taken on the cross, all of it. Now, if you reject the grace of God, then you get that judgment, not because God wouldn't forgive you or won't forgive you, but because you refuse. So don't refuse today. Believe, the Bible says, in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you'll be saved, rescued, delivered. You're a new creation when you trust in Christ. So Jesus did that for us on the cross, but he didn't stay dead. It wasn't enough just to die. On the third day, Jesus came back to life. Nobody else had ever done that before on their own strength. Jesus predicted his death and his resurrection. And the scriptures before him predicted this. Jesus fulfilled the prophecy that was spoken of him. He rose to life and he's alive forevermore. And he gives eternal life to everyone who believes in him. So right now I want to invite you to do that. To believe in him and him alone. Stop trying to be your own savior. Stop hoping your religion or your own efforts are going to somehow save you when they won't. But look to the one. Look to the one who died for you and rose for you. His name is Jesus. And put your trust in him now. If you'll do that, I want to lead you in a prayer of surrender. And I'm going to ask Mark to pray this with me out loud. He already loves Jesus, but I'm going to ask him to pray as if he's coming to faith. And if that's you and you need to come to faith, you pray with me and Mark and you pray out loud to the Lord, this prayer of surrender and faith, and you will become a new creation the moment you believe. So do this now with us. If you've not yet received Christ, this is your time. This is the moment of salvation. So pray with us. Heavenly father, heavenly father, I need you. I need you. I thank you. I thank you. That you sent Jesus for me. That you sent Jesus for me. That he died in my place. That he died in my place. On that cross. On that cross. And he took my judgment. And he took my judgment. And my death. And my death. And he rose victorious. And he rose victorious. He's alive. He is alive. Alive forevermore. Alive forevermore. Right now, Lord Jesus. Right now, Lord Jesus. I turn from myself. I turn from myself. I turn from my sin. I turn from my sin. And I turn to you. And I turn to you. I receive you by faith. I receive you by faith. As my Savior. As my Savior. And as my Lord. And as my Lord. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Come into my life. I give myself fully to you. I give myself fully to you. From this moment forward. From this moment forward. I am yours. I am yours. Fill me. Fill me. With your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. For forgiving me for forgiving me thank you thank you for making me a child of god for making me a child of god thank you thank you for giving me eternal life for giving me eternal life i pray in your name lord jesus i pray in your name lord jesus amen amen mark what just happened for those that opened (laughs) their hearts to jesus well if you prayed it from your heart then you're born again so you have a new spirit in christ jesus which is powerful so let someone know because it's great to share this. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have a gift for you that, w- w- that will help you on your new journey. It's called I Am Saved. Now what? It's a, f- it's a free download from our website. And our website is For His Glory, For His Glory, Min, M-I-N, dot org. And so you can go there to get that pamphlet. There's other resources for, for learning and videos and so forth that you'll, you'll find helpful. You can also go there to uh, follow us on podcasts. And uh, you can also uh, give us your, um, your email address on our website as well. And you can, we can put you on our mailing list and you can find out when we do these broadcasts and other things that are happening through Forest Glory Ministries. So again, Rob and I want to thank you for this yes. time together. It was great being with you and we want you to just be blessed.